today on Larry King Now, actress Toni Collette and Gerard Barrett on her powerful new role. I'd never played anything like like her. Um, I kind of don't like her. Uh, really? You know, well, only because she's so stuck and selfish and she, she, she can't find her way out of it. And I think I'm much more motivated, to be honest. Plus. And I would go to the local shop and like put on an English accent. Some. I'll have um, a half kilogram of, of uh, ham, thanks for, you know, just ridiculous, uh, you know, childish behaviour. I pretended. It was pretending. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. You may be shocked to see that I do not have my usual suspenders because I am in ski country. I'm in Park City, Utah, a Jew who almost skied. <laughs> having a great time at the Sundance Film Festival. We have some great guests coming and having a wonderful time here with the wife and a great crew. And our first guest is Toni Collette, the brilliant actress, her breakout role 20 years ago in Muriel's Wedding, Academy Award nominee, became one of the most celebrated actresses of our time. Her new film is Glassland. It's a raw and sobering story about an Irish family reeling from her character struggle with addiction. The film has been selected to compete here at the 2015 Sundance Film Fister, Festival, rather than Gerard Barrett, the director, will join us in a little while. What do you think of this town? I love it. I've been coming here since 1997. And there's something that's unchangeable, but also it has really kind of progressed a lot. I mean, the parties weren't so structured. Originally, it was just how many people can you fit in a jacuzzi? <laughs> well, yeah, it was a little town, right? It was yeah, tiny. It was, you know, but it still has that intimate quality and there's a love of filmmaking. It's so great for independent film. But in Australia, it's summer now. It's bloody hot, yeah. I'm flying there tonight. I'm nervous. <laughs> Bloody hot, I love that term. Yeah, <laughs> bloody hot. Do you like Utah? Um, I, you know, I've been here, this is my fourth time here, and uh, I haven't been here outside of the festival, but I have a wonderful time every time that I'm here. It's, I mean, it's, I didn't grow up with snow, so that in itself is a kind of a novelty for me. Not you that I have time to get out there and get a. it. Do you get to it. see other films when you're here? Not really, no. that's the, ir the irony of... Uh, Going to a film festival, you know all these films are playing, but you don't really. You get, you know, talking about my own film, and um, I see a screening of that, but no others, sadly. Tell me about Glassland. Well, um, it's, it's the a tough story. Right? Yeah, <laughs> which is why I wanted to do it. It kind of scared me a little bit, um, and it was very challenging, but in a, in a very, you know, satisfying way. Um, Jared Barrett um, is a 25-year-old guy from Ireland, and he wrote this incredible story about um, a mother and a son. The mother's very troubled and she's addicted to alcohol and it's mostly about their love and uh, what, what um, Jack Rayner plays John, my son, and, and what the lengths he will go to to, to, um, to help me try to, to try to battle it. Shot in Ireland? Yeah, in Dublin, yeah. Let's watch a scene from Glassland. The weird part is, you know, now people began to pity me. My mom and, uh, Friends, my sister. No one would return my calls. No one wanted to help. Then I got a new friend. A silent friend. A friend that would never talk back to me or hurt me. What attracted you to want to play an addict? I'd never played anything like, like her. Um, I kind of don't like her. Uh, really? you know, Well, only because she's so stuck and selfish and she, she, she can't find her way out of it. And I think I'm much more motivated, to be honest. Um, um, but the thing that drew me to it on the whole is it's just so honest and so raw. And the films that I appreciate are the ones where you cannot see the dots being joined. It's, there's nothing between the audience and what you're the story that you're being drawn into. And I, I think that um, Jared really managed to do that with, with this particular And he's story. only 25. He's 27 now, he's all grown up. We're gonna meet him in a couple of minutes. Yeah, he's lovely. Did, since you didn't like the character. No, I do, there's so much I do like about her. And I feel, I really feel for her. Um, you know, she's she doesn't have the wherewithal to move on. And despite her son's efforts, she she just can't help, us, help herself. I mean, addiction is a, it's a beast. How do you prepare to be drunk? 
I've had some experience. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was a brilliantly written script and, um, you know, this woman is desperate. She becomes animalistic. It's very... Really? Um, yeah, it's... It's very extreme and uh, and I was nervous to do it. I, you feel vulnerable walking onto a set that's already established and and it, you, you feel vulnerable because you have to kind of... There wasn't much time. We shot it in like 17 days or something, maybe less, and I was only on it for four or five days and it, and I didn't have any... Not once... Usually on a film you have a couple of easy scenes, a couple of heavier scenes. It was all really heavy. Um, and it was just a matter of getting in there and being in the moment and trying to be as honest as possible. What was it like working with Jack Rayner? Um... I think he's one of the best actors I've ever worked with. His his understanding of of the story was incredible. His dedication and I think as an actor what you really hope for in another actor is just someone who has done all the work but then is completely open and willing to connect and there was just this um silent intense connection that happened very easily and naturally nothing and you'd was never forced. worked with him before never worked with him before we'd spent you know a few hours together um jared the director and jack came to new york i was working there uh, before christmas and they came over we spent one afternoon in a in a church hall in brooklyn just talking through the the relationship and the film and what we believed it was and uh, we didn't even read the scenes out loud because I was so nervous about the accent. And then when I got there, Jack kind of took me on a, a tour of the Guinness Brewery, which was fun. And <laughs> I got my certificate, so now I officially can pull my own pint. Was it easy or hard to find the Irish accent? Uh, for me, it was um, intimidating. I've spent a lot of time in Ireland. I used to have a house there and I've got lots of Irish friends and I've we honestly spent so much time there. But this particular accent was very unfamiliar to me. It's, it's, um, the film's kind of set on the outskirts of Dublin. Is it a brogue? A what? A brogue, kind of an off Irish accent? Um, it's an area called Tala and it's, it was just, I, honestly, I could have been learning Chinese. It was that unfamiliar. You know, really? you think of the Irish accents, very lyrical and, and sing-songy. And this is a bit harsher and a bit flatter. And, and so, um, you know, I got there, I was jet-lagged. I hadn't been there in years. Um, and uh, the last time I was, had spent lots of time there was a friend who had recently died. So I was just like, ah, I'm here. And, and I worked with this fantastic dialect coach who helped kind of, you know, talk me off the ledge. I was like, oh, maybe they should can you go back hire into somebody it? else. Can you go back into it now? Um, I could probably do a bad version of it. Let's, uh, let's hear a little. No. Okay. Jeez, Louise, no. Once, once you leave it, you leave it, huh? Um... Yeah, I mean, I could probably do a more generic one, but I, w I wouldn't want to, you know, Jean is, you know, a, a very specific person. Do you try to stay in character when you're offset? No? No, I don't try to. Um, I never try to. And certainly with something this heavy, I wouldn't try to. But I think there are, there are inevitable, there's inevitable seepage. Yeah. We'll be right back with the brilliantly talented Tony Collette. We're here at uh, Park City, Utah at the Sundance Film Festival. Don't go away. We're back with Toni Collette at the Sundance Film Festival. Her new film is Glassland. We'll meet the director, Gerard Barrett, in the next segment. Recently, you said, I think it's predominantly all about indie films at the moment. I think the film industry's changed so much, there's no real middle ground. There are these $100 million budgets and then the $4 million budgets. If and that, no actually. <laughs> nothing in between? There isn't really. Very few. Um, you know, when the whole economic nightmare happened, I think, there, you know, it was it was very much divided and people were nervous. And, um, and I think there are those big, you know, Marvel money-spinning productions and then there are true auteurs who fight to, to have their story made and... Um, and that's that's certainly what Glassland is. It's it's a, a small, powerful film. It's got to get traction, right? That's the word, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it needs to find its audience. Yeah, hopefully, yes. Did you, uh, when you got the script, did you like it right away? Did you mm -hmm. say this is something a challenge? Yep. That's generally when I read something, it's immediate. If I have to think about it, I think, well, it's not really for me. But yeah, it was very much, you know, a, a big. Kind of Do you ever regret anything excitement. you turned down? Um, I try not to have any regrets. Things happen as they're meant to, don't you think? I mean, did you ever turn down... You don't have to mention it, where you then saw the film and say, oh, why didn't I do this? 
I ha you know, there was one thing, but I was completely unavailable, so it was not, not a matter of taste. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't have a regret. No. What's the state of the Australian film industry? Ah, uh, um, I wish it was better. Um, it all, it's, not, it's not like the American film industry. There's no studio system. Every film is an independent film and there are, there's a, a, a bit of government funding, but it's, it's a bit of a slog. But um, ultimately, like anywhere else in the independent film world, it depends on who the writers are and the directors are. You know, it's, it's who's around. They, they directly contribute to the cultural reflection at the time. Um, and there's, you know, there's always a couple of films out of Australia that, that tend to kind of pop internationally um, and a few more that are being made and who, which might not make it across the pond. Your Prime Minister, Geoff Whitman, when he passed away. Geoff Whitlam, yeah. Yeah, Geoff, yeah. Kate Blanchard said, lauded his efforts for women in the arts and said there is no contention in Australia these days over funding for the arts. There is contention over funding. Don't you think most industries feel underfunded? <laughs> Everyone's going to have a, a whinge, but um, to be honest, I mean, yes, you can always, you would always appreciate more money, but I think, you know, a great filmmaker is someone who can make something out of nothing. You know, it's an inner resource. It's, um, it's, it's passion. And uh, I know that there are films that are, that are wonderful, that are made on next to no money. So it, I think it depends on the talent behind it and the determination behind it. I think the hardest thing in the world is to get a movie made. Well, made well. <laughs> you can make a movie and then you can make, and it can, you know, it can be okay, it's done and it's there, but then you can make a movie when there, where there's this unspoken um, language between the people who make it and, the, you know, there's this untouchable element which becomes quite magical and I think that's what sometimes people are, are drawn to. You did a film. Was it a, t a United States of Tarot? Oh, TV show, yeah. TV three, series, Three right? seasons, yeah. yes. And you played a woman who had how many different personalities? Do you know, I don't, I can't exactly remember how many in the end. I think it ended up being about nine. Yeah. What was that like? I, it was one of the best jobs of my life. I, I loved it. When I first started, my, I had a baby. Um, I was breastfeeding her every single feed. I would get up at 4.30 and I would be with her and I would go to work and I never once complained about getting up because I adored this job so much. And, um... People are always kind of impressed or overwhelmed by the idea of playing several characters, but I just got used to it. It just, they're all part of the same person ultimately. And in a way, you know, as an actor, you kind of, um, you have the script, but they're, you're trying to allow the audience in uh, and give them glimpses of something that's happening internally. And so this was like a great luxury because each character represented something different within Tara. So in a way it was um, easy, <laughs> you know? Really? Oh, I'm, it was a luck. It was so much. It was so exciting to be able to create all of these very distinct characters under one. Did umbrella. they ever have one drift into another? Um, <laughs> I mean, there were there were changes where I was, you know, uh, I think it was the end of season two, perhaps, and there was a scene where I was. It was kind of like a malfunction where I was going from one to the other to the other to the other. But I never got confused about which character I was or you know which accent I was in or. You know, why why of, did you choose your profession? I think it chose me. I don't think I had a choice. I, I just, um, um, well, I have a couple of theories. <laughs> um, I think it was just a way for me to express things, very simply. Um, also, I was qu quite a gregarious child and I would live in, the, in my imagination. I would go to the local shop and like put on an English accent and buy some, I'll have um, a half kilogram of, pa of uh, ham, thanks for, you know, just ridiculous, you know, you childish pretended. behavior. I pretended, it was pretending. So it was natural, you just flowed into this? Seemingly, yeah. <laughs> it seems strange, I mean, I know it's such a strange thing to do with one's life, but I really love it and- uh, Well, it shows. Oh, yeah. That's good. When we come back, we'll meet the director of this uh, movie, Glassland, the young, well, he was younger when they made it. <laughs> Gerard Barrett, right after this. We're back at the Sundance Film Festival. Tony Collette remains with us. The film is Grassland and Joint Glass. Glassland. Why did I say grass? It's very similar. Well, I could it's smell it out in the street. <laughs> <laughs> Glassland. And now we meet its writer and director, the very young Gerard Barrett. You've aged since this. I have, yeah. I have. I have. Since working with this woman, without is, a doubt. Is this your first venture? With her? 
With herself? With, in, in, it's no, not his no, first film. In general, no, I made my first uh, film when I was in uh, university in Ireland and uh, threw it together for like 5,000. It was just like 85 minute film and we went to Telluride and Toronto and all these places with it. And then that led me to this lady alongside me with Glassland. And uh, we shot that a year ago today, I think. Mm -hmm. We were still shooting. When you wrote it, yeah. did you have her in mind? Yeah, 100%. Oh, don't lie. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not lying. I'm not. Why did you have her? Because, you know, I wanted, I think uh, Ireland is a, obviously we're a small little country, but I think our film industry is growing now and I wanted to bring in an international actress to kind of make the film more than just an Irish film. And Tony was always on my mind. And because she has a, a very unique set of skills as an actress and, you know, no accent is, is any problem to her. You know what I mean? And I just knew she was perfect for the role, even just to bring this woman to life, you know? Because she's quite a she's quite a tyrant of a character. She's quite a vicious character. But we also needed to have an element that there was still somebody in there. Did you write her. this from an autobiographical? No, Did my parents are beyond the most normal people in the world. They're the nicest people in the world, and uh, you know it's probably very much a love letter to them that for bringing me up a good way, you know? Um, but how did you come up with this? Yeah, script? I moved to Dublin from Kerry. I'm from a very rural part of Ireland, and I moved to Dublin City. And I f saw a lot of fractured families. I saw a lot of young, you know, young kids parenting their parents with addiction. So I'm talking about people dragging people out of pubs, you know, like 15, 16 year old boys and girls dragging their moms and dads out of pubs, uh, trying to get them home. And I just saw this and I just, I, I think it's really interesting, you know, kids parenting their parents. And I think it's happening now more than ever. Now, Jack, the co-star, he grew up in a single, right? Yeah. He, had, he was mom, raised right? by a single mom, mm -hmm. right? Did he therefore adapt easily to this? Yeah, I mean, he connected to it on a personal level as well. And, uh, you know, he brought a lot of that to it. And, but he's just an incredible actor anyway. He's such a young 21-year-old man. He, was, he came off a $300 million film, Transformers. Oh, yeah. He came and he did this little $300,000 little Irish film in Dublin in 16 days. He spent eight months on Transformers. He did this in 16 he, days. So, What was he like, young man? writer, director to work with? One of the best I've ever worked with. Really? Absolutely. Um, there's just no crap. There's just a very understated knowledge of why we're there and, and a, an incredible depth of understanding of human nature and, and these people. I mean, it's an intense story and it's very raw and, and uh, yeah, it's incredible. You know, it, you, you, it's like, it was like talking to somebody, literally talk, like talking to someone more your age, to be honest. It's just so, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> just aware, you know, it was incredible. And, and always knew the right, just very intuitively knew the right thing to say at every given moment, created a very um, easy set, a very accepting set, a freeing set. and. It was, uh, you know, it reminded me of the films that I started out with and it was very invigorating for me. Yeah, but I think one of the things that we spoke about early on was let's, let's, let's get the energy and let's, let's, you know, make this like it was one of your first or one, second or third film. You know, let's, let's just go raw and real and go at it and see what happens. And what look took you to writing and directing? I come from a part of Ireland that is very um, literary orientated. I don't know if you ever saw an Irish film called The Field with Richard Harris. Um, you know, that came out of Ireland, uh, down where I come from. And, you know, it's, it's, if it's in you, it'll find its way out of you. And it found its way out of me. Um, it's a good line. You know, and, and my poor parents, they're farmers. They were really worried that I decided to go into this I industry. My parents were worried yeah. too. <laughs> I mean, my brother's a farmer, an electrician, a plumber. And in this, like, I'm 10 years younger than all the rest of them, and I decided to go into this thing. So I, th I think they thought there was something wrong with me for a while. <laughs> but eventually, I think uh, it kind of all worked out, thank God. The, uh, when, you, when we talk, we hear the word addiction today, we think of drugs. Yeah. Has alcohol been forgotten? <laughs> it's a drug. It's a widely know, accepted but, drug. But most of the concentration now is on drug addiction. It is, but I think alcohol is still as it's because it's so freely available. It's still as bad as any one of them, you know. And it's I not think not illegal. No, and I think in Ireland we we have issues with it, and I wanted to touch upon it. And you know, I think that the great thing about it is that I think you know the film is spreading now, and, and the word is getting out there. Listen, alcohol affects every family in the world, some shape or form, and I think you know any house with an alcoholic in it is difficult. It's a major problem in Ireland. It is, yeah, it is, and it's. Uh, we spoke Australia. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. Big in Australia too. Oh, yeah. Big drinkers, yeah. Yeah. 
Russia, big. It's yeah. very weird. It's a I matter mean, of keeping warm you know, there, I think. <laughs> you know, Ireland is kind of, you know, when you're growing up, it's kind of proud to be how much you can drink. Do you know? It's proud if you go out and drink 20 pints. And that's bad. Like, that's a bad attitude to have. So we have a lot of issues. When you're working on something so serious as this and so intense, was there any fun on the set? Absolutely. It was great crack. Yeah. <coughs> it was great fun. Because it was so intense, like, I mean, we just caught it and we just go back to having fun. And listen, we're making movies, Larry. Like, we're not digging holes, you know? We're not mining, you know what I mean? When you bring in people like Tony and Jack and Will Poulter and these people, they deliver once you go, that's action, you know? And outside of that, it's, it's a good time, isn't it? Absolutely. You know? Did you feel funny, Tony, being directed by so young a man? Absolutely not. I'm not ageist. Not at you know all. what I mean, but usually, you know... No, the answer is no. He's just a really genuine, decent human being, lovely to be around, but has such an incredible uh, ability. It was a complete joy, and I'm so thankful you asked me to be in it. Are you easy to direct? Um, depends on the director. Is she? <laughs> it, depends, it depends on the day. It depends on. It depends on the scene. It depends, depends on how on she rolls out of bed some morning. You know. Yeah. Oh really? No, she's very good. She's very precise. I mean, I was, you know, of course, you to be brutally honest, you'd be concerned about what type of person is going to turn up, you know? But I went um, and I met her in New York and we kind of connected, you know? We connected the first time we spoke anyway. Mm -hmm. But you can never be sure, you know? You can never, listen, you put um, 20 or 30 people into one room and you expect them to jail. Chaos can happen. But I, but, but I kind <laughs> and of, often does. I kind of try and keep it kind of, like my mother sends homemade baking to the set, I try and keep it all very kind of <laughs> normal, you know? We'll be right back with our amazing moments with Tony Collette and the wonderful director of, of Ger uh, Gerard Barrett. The film is Glassland. We'll be right back. We're back with Tony and Gerard. Uh, the film is Glassland. We hope you see it in theater soon. It's one of the big nominees here at the Sundance Film Festival 2015. Recently, Tony, I interviewed the Oscar nominee and former Oscar winner, Marion Cotard. Mm -hmm. Great actress. Mm, she is, I believe so, yeah. And I asked her whose acting talent most impressed her in recent years. She said you. How do you feel? I bet you like her more now. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's very lovely. She did? Wow. She, she was very I feel very hot is what I feel. <laughs> very emphatic about it. Maybe you should work together. Yeah, come on, let's go. Now, Gerard, we have big news. It was just announced that you will write and direct the adaptation of Brain of Fire. Yeah. Right? That was a book? Yeah, Susanna Cahill in New York. She works for the New York Post. She's this, uh, it's an incredible New York Times bestseller. It's about this girl who, true story, memoir. She uh, had it all and lost it all in a sense. Um, woke up one morning with a mystery illness. It was killing her for a month. They flew in doctors from all over the world. A disease? Yeah, and they couldn't diagnose it. Um, her father, her mother, her boyfriend, who she only knew for a very short period of time, kind of had to stand by her. And it was, it was a really incredible, incredible story. She came out of it, thank God. And, uh, but it's just that, that month. Who stars in it? So it's uh, Dakota Fanning. And, uh, oh, like yeah, and I'm making it with Charlize Theron. So it's, it's pretty exciting. It's wow. pretty exciting. You this know. will be a bigger budget. Oh yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more time, more homemade baking for my mother to sing, uh, and more and more like that. So where will you shoot? New York, which is exciting. Now you, yeah, you didn't write this, did you write the adaptation? Yeah, Brandon Fur. Yeah, so they sent me the book, and I had to send them back 120 pages of condensed of what I wanted to do for the screen, and uh, it worked out great. Do you like writing as much as directing? Yeah, yeah I think yeah. I mean, I think like you know, you are. Someone asked me this morning, would you take on somebody else's script? And the only way I could describe it was, you know, you marry somebody because you fall in love with them. It's like when you write something, you fall in love with something. And then it's like somebody coming along saying, you know, marry this person that you've never met. You kind of have to fall in love with a project. And I think when I get a book, I can read it the numerous times and I can write it and I can fall in love with it. But, you know, I, no, I, I love writing, I do, I do. But do. Could, would you direct a film you didn't write? It depends. I think you have to be emotionally invested in something. You know, but if you got you a great to... script, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I think so, yeah. But I think there's something about building something. It's, it's all Living about, with a story. It's, it's all about the blank page, you know? You get up in the morning, there's a blank page there, and by the afternoon, you've something. 
And that's what I want to do, and that's what I'll continue to do. And if it's a book, it's a book. If it's not, if it's not, it's, you know, and, um, you know, one of my big things that I've just finished at the moment is an Irish famine script, you know, because that event in Irish history in 1847, it changed the world, you know, and it changed America. And, uh, sure did. and that's one of the most exciting things that I've just finished. So that's coming down the line, too. Red Smith, the great sports writer, said, writing is easy. You put the paper in and then you bleed. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. And it's, it's kind of, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing when you can get something that's some way coherent. And I, <laughs> no, but, and it has a bit of power to it, you know? And, uh, and thankfully, you know, but then that's my job is over. Then I need to find collaborators and then I need to stand back and let them take over. What's you know? next for you, Tom? Uh, um, You're going home. I'm going home. I'm actually doing an episode of Who Do You Think You Are? You know, that kind of documentary series about um, looking into your ancestry, which is exciting. Yeah, it's a very um, interesting yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got a film, um, Dirt Music. Uh, you know the Australian novelist Tim Winton? He's one of my favourite writers and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful story about a woman kind of misplaced in a world and trying to find her way again. Um, when do you shoot? Uh, later in the year. You have a young son, right? Yeah, yes, I do, and a, and a daughter. And you're close to your mother. <clears throat> Very right? close. Too what close. is it about, in this film, what is it about mothers and sons? I know fathers and daughters, but mothers and sons. There's a certain... Fam family is powerful. I mean, blood is strong, and... Uh... But there's a certain unique thing. No, there is. I, like, I have three brothers. It's for, like, so there's, including my father, there's five boys in the house and one woman, and she bosses all of us, by the way. <laughs> but, um, no, there is, there is a connection there. I don't know what it is. It's different. I don't know what it is you know, I, I, it's different with daughters. I, I, I don't know, but it's, I think there's a kind of a... There's a protective, a real protective thing over their boys. Mothers, mothers love their boys big time. I'm sure they love I their love girls as well, of children. course. Yeah. And, you know, I've, many people have said that, and my, my son's three and a half, and it's only in the last maybe six months that I've started to kind of understand why they say it. They're, they're, I am kind of in love with each other. He's just the most yeah. beautiful little well, thing. Well, it's been said, it's almost sensual. The baby, yeah, the baby it, daughter yeah. hears the man's voice and is attracted to it. The baby son hears the woman's voice and is attracted to it. And somehow that goes on. There's something I'm oh, no, Well, if, that, if that's a person's out. inclination, there's a theory for yeah. you, yeah. I'm throwing it out. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think there is. I think, like, my mother is obsessed with, with, with her boys, you know, and uh, uh, it's like, you know, if I don't ring home twice a day, there's a lot of problems if I don't ring home and check in, you know. She's and in this, in Glassland, that's the case between this boy and his mother, right? Yeah, I mean, they're very, very close, but they're, it's fractured, and there's a reason why it's fractured. So she drinks? There's mo even, she drinks for a reason. Oh. And there's a, there's a reason there that's quite, kind of, quite, I, I feel anyway, quite common. That goes on a lot. And, Can't wait uh, to see it. And it's kind of, uh, you know. Thank probably. you both very much. Thank it's you. It's such a pleasure Tony. to meet Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gerard. Glassland is the film. The star is uh, Tony Collette. And the director and writer is Gerard Barrett. And we'll look for it in a theater near you soon. From Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah. We'll see you next time.